So I'm going to tie one of my go-to patterns today. This is my version of a spawning shrimp. It's a fantastic fly for permits, triggers, bonefish uh, and lots of other critters. Materials. The hook is a Gamakatsu SC15 in size 3. I think this is a great hook for this pattern uh, because the curved shank gives a really nice shrimpy profile to the fly. If you didn't have the curved shank and used something like a SL11, it would still work but the fly wouldn't have the same profile. The eyes I made myself, those are made with burnt mono, nail varnish and some UV glue on top. Okay, for the tail, this H2O sculpting flash fibre. I pulled out most of the flash because I thought it unnecessary. You could use craft fur, but I like the translucence of this. In front of that, this is the dubbin I'm using to form a small lump before the, putting the legs in. Honestly, you can use pretty much anything, it doesn't matter. The legs, you could use rubber legs, I personally find them a little bit too stiff and too thick. These uh, give plenty of movement and suit the pattern well. For the main body, uh, Cohen's Carp Dub. This is great for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's nice and translucent. And secondly, you can just see it's got these little um, rubber legs in, which I think helps to give uh, a nice profile and a little bit of extra movement. And for the eyes, mini painted lead eyes, obviously you can choose whichever colour you like. I find the mini ones, are the, that's what I use the most. For me it's just the right size and gives just the right amount of weight for this kind of fly in this size. And for thread, Beavis as normal. I like this especially for this fly because you can split the thread which means when I make the body it's just a lot easier rather than actually making a dub and loop. Okay, let's crack to it. To start with, a thin layer of super glue onto the shank. Work that thread down. Now I'm going to take the thread quite far down because I really want to use the curve of this SC15 to give a nice shrimpy shape. Okay, that's about right there. Now I've got my homemade shrimp eyes, I'm going to put them in one at a time. Just take a few loose turns because you'll probably need to reposition them to make sure they're both lying uh, together. Pull this one out a little. Okay. Nothing worse than finishing the fly and realizing your eyes are not aligned. So I want those eyes to splay out, so I'm just going to, excuse my fingers, just pull them apart slightly and then take the thread in between the eyes on one side, then in between on the other. Okay. Snip off this. That snip off that excess. And to make sure those mono eyes don't move, another little layer of glue. Okay. 
Next up, I've got my sculpting flash fiber to make sure this is as strong as possible when I tie it in. I'm going to take it over the thread and fold in half. To form my tail. It's obviously far too long. So when I trim my tail, I'm not just going to cut it square. I'm going to hold my scissors at an angle and as I squeeze the scissors together move them up to form a nice taper. Might just have to do this a couple of times. The tail I'm looking to be just a little over the length of the hook. Tangled up. There we go. Next up, I'm going to form a small ball of dubbin just in front of the shrimp eyes. And I'm doing this not really to add colour, but because it helps splay out the silicon legs. a little too much on that. Better. I'm just taking that dub and one turn's going on top of another. Okay, excellent. So I've got my rubber legs or my silicon legs. I don't use rubber legs because I find them a little thick. I'll tie those in one at a time. Two different colours. Just going to spin the hook so I can do this a little easier. I'm not going to bother trimming those now because to be honest it's a lot easier doing that when the hook's off the vise. Next up to form the rest of the body, or really most of the body. I'm going to flatten the thread. I do this by pinching it uh, between my forefinger and my nail. And then I take a needle and I'm going to split the thread. Now you could form a dub and loop. I find splitting the thread easier. And this is where this Vivas thread is great because it's actually quite easy to split. Now I've taken a good lump of that Cohen's carp dub and I made sure I've got plenty of legs in there as well. And then I just put that in between the split thread and space it out. Now I just rest it on my forefinger on my left hand and spin the thread. Doesn't matter in which direction you spin. Just do that once more. Now to ease all of this uh, dubbing out, you could use a needle. I find that a bit of a faff. So I've got a Velcro attached to a card and then I just tease it out by brushing. Much, much quicker. You do lose a bit of a dubbing, 
but I put plenty on there, so it's not a problem. And now I've got a nice brush. So work that thread back to where the legs are. I can pull the legs just down to get them out of the way. Okay, and now I'm just going to ease it back towards the eye of the hook, making sure there's a little space in between each turn. I don't want this fly too dense. Okay, and now I can just ease that out again. Velcro. Looking good and that dubbin is really nice and translucent so it looks super. Spin the hook around and I'm just going to put a little more of this sculpting fibre on top. Tying it in the same way as I did before, putting it over the thread and folding going to take a little out. You really don't want too much of this. Just trimming that so that's got a nice taper, as with the tail. Once that's off the vise I can position it better. And now for my nice mini lead eyes. Just going to stick a small blob of super glue when I'm tying those in. Just helps to make sure they don't spin. Just going to turn the vise a little so I can see better from where I am. Just to neaten that up a little, there's a bit of a space there, you can just see behind the eyes where uh, I need to put a little more dubbing. This time no need to split the thread, just put it on as normal. I'm just going to use actually the needle this time because it is a little more awkward being close to the eyes with a big velcro card to tease out. And whip finish. Okay, so I'm going to take this out of the vise now and just check the positioning of that top wing. Now it's really much easier trimming everything out of the vise. So I can trim the legs. These I want fairly long. And one colour I will trim slightly shorter than the others, just by about half a centimetre. Super! So there you go, that's my version of a spawning shrimp. Uh, you can see that Gamakatsu SC15 has done a good job of making a nice shrimpy profile with its curved shank, as has the kind of translucent dubbin. Uh, done a good job of making, I think, it look nice and shrimpy and nice and translucent. Like I say, a great fly for bonefish, triggers, permit, and lots of other things. Give it a try.